The fill tool is the seventh tool down in the toolbar. I think the fill tool is misnamed. It ought to be called the gradient tool because really it is used for creating gradients and it is called the gradient tool in the desktop version of Affinity Designer. So I really have no idea why they decided to call it the fill tool on the iPad version, but that's what it's called. Fills are actually managed from the color studio, which is in the top right. But in this video, we're going to talk about what this misnamed fill tool does. And we will talk about the color studio in the studios course. So the fill tool allows you to control gradients. Select the fill tool, which is right here below the pen tool. Then drag across the shape that you want to apply the gradient fill to. By default, it will be a linear gradient running from the current fill shade to a darker fill of that same color. But we can change all that. I'll show you the basics on this rectangle. First, we tap the rectangle so that we can select it to apply a gradient to. Then we drag across. First, we just have the light teal to the dark teal gradient. We can drag on either of the endpoints to adjust how the gradient is running from side to side. We can drag it further out or bring it further in. If we hold one finger on the screen, we can constrain it to 45 degree angles. We can drag on the middle point of the bar to adjust the midpoint of the gradient. We can tap on the bar at the midpoint to add another color stop in the middle. We can tap on a color stop to highlight it, and that will allow us to adjust the color that is in that stop. We have to use the Swatches Studio for this, which is in the Color Studio. If we want to delete a stop, we can just tap on it and then tap delete in the contextual menu. At any point we can redrag on the screen to redraw the gradient. In the contextual menu we can also rotate the gradient by 90 degrees by clicking the rotate button or reverse the gradient by tapping the reverse button. So far we have used only a linear gradient but let's apply another gradient to this circle over here by tapping on it and then we can see what the radial gradients look like. When we drag it out it starts out as a linear gradient but we can change that. Down in the contextual menu we can click the arrows next to linear to change what type of gradient it is. First we get elliptical. We can also choose radial. The difference is that the elliptical gradient is applied in two directions and can be adjusted to get a galaxy effect. The radial gradient is applied in just one direction and can give you spherical shading. The same adjustments, such as tapping in the middle to add a color stop, and adjusting the midpoints, apply to radial gradients and to elliptical gradients. Now let's tap on this triangle so we can apply the conical gradient to it. First we'll draw the linear gradient, and then from the type menu, We'll scroll until we get conical. The conical gradient is a little harder to get the hang of than the others. The first stop is in the center and then runs along the outside. To get the cone effect on this triangle, I need to position the first stop at the top point of the triangle. And then rotate the gradient so it looks like it is rounding from one side to the other. I can apply another stop just like normal by tapping one of the midpoints 
and putting in another color. Of course, I can rotate it to get more of that conical feel. The last thing to know about gradients is that they can also be applied to strokes, which really is why this doesn't make sense to call this the fill tool. But if you tap on the very left hand side of the contextual menu, you can see that this is now on the stroke and we can actually apply a gradient to the stroke as well. Let's raise up the stroke size here. And then we'll just select uh, some colors for our stroke. And now you can see that the gradient is running along the stroke as well as the fill of this triangle. That is all for the fill tool, which should be called the gradient tool. Next, we will talk about the transparency tool.